Hey guys, welcome back to this week's What's for Dinner. I hope you all are having an amazing day and I hope you all are staying cool out there in this hot weather. I've got some really delicious meal ideas for you guys this week, so let's get started. Alright guys, so for dinner tonight, I'm going to be making some shrimp alfredo. It's going to be absolutely delicious. I've got some fettuccine pasta here. I've got about a pound, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Um, it can be small pasta, it can be spaghetti. You can even use rice if that's all you have on hand. So I've got some pasta, some salt and pepper. I've got two containers of Parmesan cheese here. This is almost empty, so I'm going to finish using this up and then um, open that one. Got some cream, some milk, some garlic, shrimp that's already peeled and deveined, and I've already thawed it out, and I've just got it sitting over a bowl to catch some of the excess water. I've got some butter and some flour, so I'm going to get you guys set up, and we will start making some delicious dinner. Okay, so I brought a pot of water up to a boil, added some salt, put the lid on, and then let it come back up to a boil, and just added my noodles and gave them a little stir around the pot. So I'm going to let those hang out and cook. In the meantime, we're going to make the shrimp and alfredo sauce. Okay, so I've got a little bit of butter in my pan here, and I'm going to cook my shrimp until they are completely cooked through and then I'm just going to remove them to a bowl and set them aside and then we will make our sauce. Okay, so I removed my shrimp, put them in a bowl. Now I'm going to add in just a little bit of butter and get that melting. Okay, that is almost done. I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of garlic you can add as much or as little as you want. Depends on if you like garlic or not. I'm going to let this cook for about 30 seconds. Not long at all because we don't want that garlic to burn. And now we're just going to add in our flour. And get this all nice and mixed up. At this point, I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper because I can always add some more later. And then we're going to slowly add in our cream and milk. Okay, now that that is all in there. I'm just going to let this heat through. It should take about two to three minutes just to heat through and thicken up slightly. And then we will add in our cheese. Okay, so that has thickened up nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my cheese. My noodles are almost done. Now you can add as much or as little cheese as you want. I'm gonna do probably about a half of a cup and stir that in, turn my heat down to low. So my pasta is done and I'm just going to add my pasta directly into my sauce. Okay, now I'm just going to cut my heat off and now I'm just going to toss this pasta into this sauce and let it cook just a minute or two just to absorb some of that sauce and for the pasta to finish cooking. Okay, so now we're going to add our shrimp back in. And if the sauce gets a little bit too thick, um, you can go ahead and add in some of the pasta water and it will kind of loosen that back up. All right. Now you can top this with some more Parmesan cheese when you get it all served up and some parsley or some basil. So 
I'm going to go ahead and plate this up and I will show you what it looks like when I get it ready. All right, guys, so here is my plate. I just have some of the shrimp alfredo here, a little bit of cheesy garlic bread that I just threw in the air fryer because the air fryer was already out, and some greens with a little bit of lemon juice, salt, and a pepper. So yeah, that is what's for dinner tonight. All right, guys, so for dinner tonight, we're gonna be making Salisbury steak and gravy, mashed potatoes, side of corn, and I've also got some fresh sourdough challah bread baking in the oven. It's going to be absolutely delicious. So, for the um, Salisbury steak, you're going to need some breadcrumbs, some uh, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, dry mustard, or you can use the prepared mustard, whichever ha one you have on hand. That'll work fine. Some... Um, beef broth powder, herbs and seasoning of your choice. I've got a pound of ground beef. Um, if, you're, if you have a bigger family, you can double or triple this. Um, it'll work out just fine. I'm not going to make homemade brown gravy today. Packet is just going to have to do today. So you're going to need a packet of brown gravy and some water for that. Mashed potatoes are going to be pretty simple, basic today. I've got some potatoes here that I need to use up. Some milk that I need to use up. You're also going to need some salt and pepper, which I've got right here. And some butter. I'm going to have a side of corn, but I haven't gotten that out of the freezer. But I will get that out in just a few minutes. So yeah, I'm going to get you guys set up and we will start on the potatoes. Okay, so I've got my potatoes in my pot. I just peeled them, put them in a pot, filled it up with water, and now I've got it over medium heat. I'm just gonna let them cook and hang out until they get tender, and then I'm gonna drain them. In the meantime, we're gonna work on the Salisbury steaks. Okay, so I've got my ground beef here, and I just added my, um, my bread crumbs. I'm gonna add a little bit of ketchup. You can also do tomato paste, you can do crushed tomatoes, um, whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, some pepper, some salt. I'm going to add some of this Italian seasoning. I don't have much left. I think that'll be good and some mustard. I like to use dry mustard, but you can use um, the prepared mustard. That'll work just fine. And some broth powder. This is gonna add a lot of flavor. Now you can mix this by hand, you can do a fork. I'm just gonna mix this with a fork because I've already got it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and shape these into patties and then we will get these on the stove. Okay, so I've got my potatoes cooking up right there. I went ahead and put my Salisbury steak in my pan with a little bit of oil and some butter, about a tablespoon of each. And I just shake them out, put them in there. And I'm letting them cook on one side, and then I'm going to flip them over, let them cook on the other side. And I'm going to take them out and drain some of that grease off. And I've also got some corn back here heating up. So I'm just going to let this cook, and then I'll bring you back in just a second. And then we will add the gravy, which I've already got mixed up right there, waiting for me. So, yeah. Okay, so I just put my gravy in my pan there and let it thicken up about halfway. Then I put my Salisbury steaks back in there. And all I'm gonna do now is put a lid on. I'm gonna keep it on low and let that cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to mash my potatoes. All right, so here is my potatoes. I just added some butter, milk, salt, and pepper and smashed those together and that is ready to go. I'm waiting on the Salisbury steak to finish up and then we will be ready. So I will show you what it looks like when I get it all plated. 
All right, guys, so I've got my Salisbury steak and gravy here with some mashed potatoes, a little bit of extra gravy on the side, and some corn. This just has salt and pepper in it. So, yeah, that is what's for dinner tonight. Okay, guys, so for dinner tonight, I'm just going to make some chicken wraps and some tater tots. I've got some of these chicken strips here that I'm going to throw in the air fryer as well as some of these tater tots. I've got these um, large burrito sized tortillas. A few of these tomatoes. I'm obviously going to add more but that's what I've got right now. I'm going to add some of this ranch, some of this truffle parmesan and black garlic seasoning, some romaine. I've got a piece or two of bacon um cooking up on the stove so i'm gonna get everything in the air fryer and i'll show you what it looks like when i get it plated up all right so here is my plate i've just got my chicken wrap here it's got lettuce tomato bacon um the chicken strips a little bit of ranch and some of that truffle seasoning my tater tots and my ketchup i'm gonna add some black pepper to that and that is what's for dinner today Okay guys, so for tonight, I'm going to be making a BLT tortellini pasta salad. It's absolutely delicious. It looks like a lot of ingredients, but it's all the right ones. So I've got some tortellini. I've got some water coming up to a boil on the stove for my pasta. I've got some romaine chopped up here. I've got some bacon that I need to cook up. I've already chopped it and got that ready to go. I've got some mozzarella. Um, cubed up. You can use fresh mozzarella if you have that on hand. I've got some cherry tomatoes that I've just halved. For my sauce ingredients, this is like a buttermilk ranch dressing type thing that's really, really delicious. I've got some Worcestershire sauce, some white wine. You can do um, regular vinegar as well. Ranch powder, hot sauce, salt and pepper. Got some dill garlic, buttermilk, mayo, and some sour cream. So we're going to make the sauce first while the um, pasta and the bacon are cooking so that way it gets um, sort of combined together before we add it to the pasta. So let's get that going. Okay so I'm going to start off with my sauce. Um, I've already got my buttermilk in here. I'm just going to do it in my little two cup measuring cup so that way I can just put some plastic wrap over the top and just pop it in the fridge. So I'm going to add in my mayo, my sour cream, and I'm going to add just a little bit of garlic. You can add as much or as little as you want. I'm going to add about a clove of garlic, a little bit of salt, and some pepper, some dill weed, some ranch powder, which is about, um, about a packet of ranch powder. If you don't have a packet and you have just the bucket here, it should be about three tablespoons. I'm going to add in about two teaspoons of vinegar, about a teaspoon or so of Worcestershire sauce, and you can add as much hot sauce as you like. I'm going to do about two teaspoons. You can add less or more to your heat preference. It's not going to give it too much heat, but it's going to give it just a little bit of flavor. Okay, now I'm just going to mix all of this together until it's nice and smooth. I'm going to put some plastic wrap on the top and pop this in the fridge while we cook our pasta and our bacon okay guys so i've got my bacon and my pasta on cooking um, i've just brought this up to a boil added some salt let it come back up to a boil and then added in my tortellini i'm just going to cook that according to the package directions and i've also got my bacon going and i'm just going to cook that until how i like it really i like it crispy um, so i'm just going to do that and then i'm going to drain it on some paper towel back here um, when my pasta gets done, I'm going to drain that, 
so I'll bring you back when I get all of this cooked. Okay guys, so I've got my pasta all cooked up and it's cooked completely through and I drained it and rinsed it in some cold water. Now all you're going to do is add all of the other ingredients. So I've got my bacon. It has drained and cool as well. I'm going to add in some romaine lettuce. You can add as much or as little as you want. We're going to start off with a little bit and go from there. My mozzarella. My tomatoes. And my sauce. So I'm going to add just a little bit. And then we will add some more if we need to. And this makes for a great dipping sauce for rat, uh, wraps or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this together. Okay guys, so that is all mixed up. I'm going to clean up a little bit and then I'm going to make my plate. I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all plated up. Okay guys, so here is what it looks like when it's all plated up. I just topped it with a little bit more pepper. And yeah, that is what's for dinner tonight. Okay guys, so for dinner tonight, we're going to be making margarita pizza. It's absolutely delicious and it's very, very easy. I've got my oven preheating to 425 degrees. I've already got a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and sprinkled over some cornmeal. You don't have to do that. I just like to do that, but whatever shape that you make it in is your choice. Now I've got some pizza dough here. You can use whatever pizza dough that you like or have on hand. I made mine. This is going to make two pizzas, so I'm just going to freeze half of this so that way next time I want to make pizza, I have dough ready. But yeah, you can use whatever you have on hand or whatever pizza dough is your favorite. I've got some mozzarella cheese here. I've got some crushed tomatoes, olive oil, basil, a little bit of red pepper flakes, and some salt and pepper. Now you can season this however you want. We like ours pretty basic, so we're just gonna add that. So I'm gonna get you guys set up and we'll get this started. Okay, so I've got my dough rolled out to the sides of my pan. It comes up on the sides a little bit, but that's fine. This pan has the little holes in it, so that's why I have the parchment down so it doesn't bake into the holes of the pan. And then I just have some cornmeal on the bottom so it doesn't stick. So I'm going to add just a little bit of some of these crushed tomatoes. Kind of spread that around. You can add as much or as little as you want. So now I'm going to drizzle over some olive oil just to give it a little bit more flavor. Now I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Now I'm just going to add my mozzarella on top. You can add it however you want because this is going to melt down and it gets all nice and gooey. Okay, now I'm just going to pop this in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes until the cheese is nice and melted and the crust is golden and completely cooked through. Okay, so I just um, cooked this for about 12 minutes in the oven and then I popped it under the broiler for about two minutes. And now all you're gonna do is sprinkle on some of your basil and you're pretty much good to go. All you gotta do now is just slice it and serve. All right guys, so this is what it looks like when it's all plated up. I'm going to add some salad greens to this with a little bit of probably some lemon juice and some olive oil and that is what's for dinner tonight. Okay guys, so for this week's meal plan, we're going to have on Monday some baked onion chicken and some asparagus. 
Tuesday, we're going to have Greek turkey meatballs with quinoa and peas. These are so good. Wednesday, I'm not really sure yet. Um, if we have leftovers, we will probably have those or maybe some sandwiches and some chips. Um, we'll see when we get there. On a Thursday, we're going to have broccoli, beef, stir fry, and rice. And a Friday, we're going to have roasted whole chicken with quick onion rice. So yeah, that is this week's What's for Dinner meal plan. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.